Okay, this is going to be part two of my surface area video. Um, so, again, the integration in this one is not tricky. The point I'm trying to illustrate more than anything is how you can um, switch between these DS formulas, um, at least if the algebra is easy to do. So, again, we said we were rotating y equals square root of x, the x coordinates between 4 and 9 about the x axis. So, again, the surface area formula that we have to use is this 2 pi y ds formula. Again, we have no choice about that. We do have a choice about the ds formula, so now I'm going to use the opposite one, the uh, 1 plus g prime of y quantity squared dy. Okay, so what this means is, first off, we're going to have to get our function um, in terms of y's. Well, if I take my function y equals square root of x and just solve for x, we'll get simply x equals y squared so there's our g of y, okay? And this is going to be kind of illustrates when you can, uh, at least algebraically, switch back and forth. It's when you're going to be able to take your equation, and if it's already in terms of x, it's going to make it, it, it should be algebraically easy to get in terms of y and vice versa. If not, you're going to be a little more limited as to the ds formula that you use. Okay, so it says, hey, all we have to do is take the derivative, so g prime of y is going to be 2y. So now if I fill in my formula, it says we're going to get the integral of 2 pi times, okay, so let me fill in my ds part first. It says we get 1 plus the derivative, all squared. Well, we just figured out what the derivative was. It was 2y. I need to drop my dy in there. Again now, we're integrating this one um, with respect to y, so that means all of my um, integrand should only have y's. The formula says it should be 2 pi y. Well, I need to just drop the y in there. And this illustrates the difference between using the other technique. In the last one, we had to replace the y with its equivalent x version. That is, we had to put square root of x in here when we integrated with respect to x. Okay, well, <clears throat> now that we're integrating with respect to y, our limits of integration also come from the y-axis. So the smallest y-coordinate is 2, the largest y-coordinate is 3. Those become the limits of integration. And <clears throat> now it's simply a matter of calculating this integral. So we can pull the 2 pi out front. We have 2 to 3 of the integral y square root 1 plus 4y squared, squaring the uh, inside parts. And I think you'll probably agree that this integral I think is a little easier actually than the other one. <clears throat> so to integrate this thing, again let me give myself some more room. <clears throat> Sorry, I've got a bit of a cold here. <coughs> okay, so our u substitution is going to be 1 plus 4y squared. Our du will turn into 8y dy. Okay, so <clears throat> when we go to replace our integral, we've got 2 pi, the integral. Let's see, underneath the square root, that's what we're calling u. <clears throat> so my du, I can divide both sides, or excuse me, multiply what, both sides by 1 eighth. So I'll get 1 eighth du is equivalent to y dy. Well, there's a y dy I have to replace, so I'll plug in the 1 8th, but I'll just pull the 1 8th out front, and I'll replace the dy with du. <coughs> Again, I have to change my limits of integration now, so I have to be careful. So the original lower limit was when y equals 2. If I plug y equals 2 into my substitution, I'll get 2 squared, which is 4. 4 and 4 is 16, plus 1 is 17. If you plug in 3, we'll get 3 squared, which is 9, times 4, which is 36 plus 1, or 37. And if you saw uh, part 1 of this video, this integral should probably start looking pretty familiar at this point. Okay, so, but let's go ahead and just compute it out. We're going to get pi over 4 out front. Okay, when I integrate u to the 1 half, I'll get u to the 3 halves. We'll multiply that by 2 thirds. I have to evaluate that from 17 to 37. So we're almost there. The pi over 4, I'll have a 2 in the denominator, so that'll give me pi over 6. 
I've got u to the 3 halves, so that'll give me 37 to the 3 halves power minus 17 to the 3 halves power, and that is the same value that we calculated um, from before. Okay, so again, just illustrating um, more than anything that you can pick your ds, which one you want to use. Again, sometimes one just may be easier than the other. If you can't switch back and forth here, you know, we had y isolated um, in terms of x, so that was nice, excuse me. Um, and it was easy to go backwards and kind of get the x isolated and put it in terms of y. When you can do that, that's when you can use either one of the ds formulas. Um, again, if you compare this to the first video, though, I think you'll see that, at least to me, I think this integration was a touch easier. Um, nothing major, but a little faster. So, all right, I hope this helps. If you want to see a more complicated example, let me know. Um, otherwise, shoot me an email if you have any questions.